Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Please, please take your seats because, you know, it's our tradition now to start this event almost on time. Just within about five minutes, right? Welcome to the third in the presidential lecture series featuring Dr. Michael Perez. And uh, I want to welcome everyone here. I see a lot of students in Kirk Johnson's sociology classes, so welcome a lot of faculty. And of course, before we get started with this event, uh, we'll, we'll recognize the dignitaries in the house, beginning with our Board of Regents and UOG protocol. I'd like to welcome to you Andrew Lubwatka, our board member. And of course, what would the presidential lecture series be without the president? And so I welcome Dr. Robert Underwood, the 10th president of the University of Guam. We also have Dr. Helen Wicke, our senior vice president of academic and student affairs. And David O'Brien, and he is our vice president of administration and finance. And I'd also like to recognize our senator, the Honorable Benjamin Cruz. He is the vice speaker of the 30th Guam legislature. I'd also like to welcome tonight Dr. Narissa Britannia Schaefer, Schaefer, and she is the superintendent of the Guam public school system. And I also see uh, uh, Dean Mary Spencer of the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Welcome all of you, and now I'd like to call to the podium Dr. Robert Underwood to introduce our guest speaker for tonight's series. Uh, thank you, Kathleen. I'd also uh, like to uh, recognize uh, uh, former Senator Dr. Catherine Hogan. You know, I know today is uh, Cinco de Mayo, and uh, and uh, today, uh, sometimes people confuse that with Mexican Independence Day, but that's not what it really is. Uh, today, it, it's a recognition of the victory of the Mexicans over the French. Uh, but I don't, I don't prefer to think of it that way. I think of it as the triumph of indigenous good lead leadership and resistance to imperialism. Because, you know, <laughs> Benito Juarez was the first truly indigenous president of uh, Mexico and he led the uh, Mexicans against the invading French. I know a lot of us like to think of it as uh, kind of uh, Latino St. Patrick's Day or something, just a chance to get drunk, but it's a little bit more than that. Uh, in partial recognition of that triumph, and, uh, but mostly in celebration of the triumph of the uh, human spirit, in this case, uh, the Chamorro human spirit, I'm honored to introduce to you this evening uh, the third speaker in the presidential lecture series here at the University of Guam. Uh, tonight's speaker is a relatively young man, uh, but one with a distinguished career as a scholar on many issues of importance to Guam and the Marianas Islands, and especially uh, the Chamorro people. Uh, he is a sociologist. You know, sociologists many times are kind of in their own world. And those of you who've had a sociology professor or two know that. Many of you have heard the question, how many sociologists does it take to change a light bulb? The answer is none. For the sociologist is likely to say, the light bulb is fine. There's something wrong with the system. Focusing in on the context, the social environment, the dynamics of trends larger than the individual unit, and thereby giving us a new set of eyes to uh, witness the human panorama, Sociologists see things uh, that we don't see, or at least they tell us so. Uh, sociologists hear things we don't hear because they listen to different voices. And sociologists use different words from us because uh, they have invented their own language. And tonight we have a master sociologist and a scholar. Uh, he writes articles with titles that I have a hard time pronouncing, let alone comprehending. Inter-ethnic antagonism in the wake of colonialism. U.S. Territorial Racial Ethnic Relations at the Margin, or Pacific Identities Beyond U.S. Racial Formulations, uh, the case of Chamorro Ambivalence and Flux. Uh, both these titles suggest tantalizing concepts and uh, breakthrough formulations. The underlying framework for much of uh, Dr. Paris's work is diaspora, the notion that Chamorros are involved in some kind of 
mass migration, and sometimes on occasion return. The underpinnings of this diaspora are multifaceted and all appear to be a matter of uh, individual choice. But sociologists are supposed to discern trends and not just aggregate a series of individual choices. And Dr. Uh, Paris provides this analysis in this spirit, and he does so in a compelling way. But the notion of diaspora is more than just a phenomena for tomorrow's to ponder, even if it is the focus this evening. Dr. Paris reminded me yesterday that a majority of the students at the university are involved in their own diaspora scene. They're all members of some other diaspora, mostly non tomorrow and explaining to themselves their presence and their movement in the context of Guam society. For sure, the faculty comes as part of some larger diaspora. And uh, uh, perhaps someone here uh, on campus will take up the challenge to examine this phenomenon. Uh, in the meantime, we will listen intent and ponder the case of the Chamorro people of Guam and the Marianas. Uh, Dr. Harris is a full professor of sociology at Cal State University Fullerton, a school that I attended for one semester when Dr. Paris was just being born. <laughs> he may be moving to the University of California, Riverside soon, an institution where he earned his PhD. It's a pleasure and an honor that I introduce to you this evening a Paris, a provincial, a sociology, and a member of the uh, diasporic team, stream, Dr. Michael Paris. Wow, that was quite an introduction. Can you stay up here and continue? Well, I, um, you know, being Cinco de Mayo, I, I had, um, you know, I had to ponder uh, an, int an introduction that was historically significant, and um, and Dr. Underwood took most of my material, but I did say one thing, and um, you know, there's another um, Indio Mestizo uh, Mexican that comes to mind um, that has a historical significance by the name of Jose. Cuervo, um, and because he's the president, he allowed me to put something other than water in the bottle here so I can relax my nerves. Ah, just kidding. You know, the, um, you know, as I was driving around today, um, I, you know, I was driving around the, the island a little bit, and um, I was listening to one of the local radio stations, and um, one of the themes that came on um, to commemorate and to mark the uh, this uh, this date, you know, Cinco de Mayo, um, the the theme song that was played was uh, Lowrider, the famous song Lowrider, and it and it got me to ponder, you know, you know, how might that be relevant to what um, you know I have to talk about tonight, and um, you know, one of the one of the um, misconceptions within a society in which people converge in a geographical space as a result of uh, multiple histories and experiences is a distortion of who people are. And so I found it both ironic and humorous that uh, lowrider is not only a theme that is often used in, as, as a background beat to represent uh, Mexican culture, um, but that it's, it's also transplanted on Guam. So the issue of, of, of diaspora is not s simply the migration of peoples. Um, we're talking about uh, multiple routes of not only geographical space and physical movement of bodies, but the symbolic movement of spirits and the cultural movements of ideas and cultures. And so really, really what we're talking about, as Dr. Underwood said, is you know, the underpinning uh, rooted in diaspora is really, really the story of people and movement in the world. Um, in precise uh, response to being displaced, yeah. And so the story of, of Chamorros is a case in point, but it also is a unique case in point in the ways in which Chamorros have responded and resisted and adapted um, to colonization 